Yum, yum! Hey, this is Ed Ferrari, and in this quick video, I'd like to discuss the Fusion Pi menu, uh, specifically the Fusion Pi menu as it pertains to the schematic, because the Fusion Pi menu is context sensitive. Uh, so if I hold Control F to bring up the Fusion Pi menu in the 3D viewport, uh, you'll see we get some options. Uh, the top option is New Fusion with Selected. Now that's grayed out because I don't have an item selected, but if I bring up the schematic by clicking the little schematic icon, and then within the schematic window, uh, hold Control F, uh, you can see we get totally different options. So the top option is clear extra mesh channels. So these are all related to Fusion, but they're different than the options that we get if we hold Control F in the viewport. Uh, so I'm just going to set up a quick scene um, and we'll see how we can use uh, Fusion without relying on the Fusion side tab buttons. And there's nothing wrong with these buttons, they're great, but it's just nice to know um, some kind of advanced techniques um, and how to set things up in the uh, schematic uh, viewport. So I have some uh, very basic items here. I have a disk, uh, some, it's like a cylinder geometry that's been shortened, and then there's some edge weighting just so the cylinder maintains its uh, hardness in Catmull Clark mode. And then I have uh, an egg, uh, what I've named egg small, and that's just a, kind of like a, a squished sphere. And then I have a larger uh, version of that, which is just a duplicate that's been uh, pushed out a little bit. And then I finally have a sphere item. So we're going to use this sphere uh, in a new fusion setup. Uh, now, whoops, I accidentally flipped that. Um, so with this sphere item selected, uh, normally you would come over to the new fusion button here, uh, and you would create your new fusion with selected meshes, but you can do that from the pie menu. Uh, so if you have the sphere selected and you hold control F to bring up the Fusion Pi menu, you can choose the topmost option, which is New Fusion with Selected. Now, as soon as I do that, we get a new uh, workspace, and you can see here the sphere is uh, selected, and there's a Fusion Feed channel. Now, that channel is created when you uh, create the new Fusion. Uh, the Fusion Feed is not present on normal uh, mesh items, but I'll show you how to uh, get that uh, in a minute. Now that's piped into a Fusion Intersect, which is then uh, fed into a Fusion Union, and then that finally comes into the Fusion item itself, into the Fusion Tree In. So we're just going to set this up manually, so I'm just going to quickly uh, remove this, and for this I am going to rely on uh, this button here to remove uh, the mesh roll. So I'll just remove that. So now this sphere is just a basic sphere, and we can actually uh, completely remove this. So I'll just right click and choose Remove Node. And then I'm going to delete these because I want to show how we can create this manually. So I'll delete these. That might be off the window, but let me just drag this up so uh, you can see exactly what I'm doing. I like to show as much as possible. So I'll just right click on those nodes and click delete. And then the fusion item is the, the one item that uh, is part of fusion that unfortunately we can't uh, create with, um, with the pie menu unless we create a whole setup. Um, but you can duplicate uh, these items. So if I right click and choose node duplicate and then duplicate, uh, we get a, a fusion item. So I can delete this, uh, this original one. And again, that's off screen, so let me just delete the original. Now unfortunately, when you duplicate this, uh, it doesn't come in with the appropriate channels. So for that, we have to come into the channel tab and we have to scroll all the way down to the bottom and where it says Fusion Tree In, that's uh, necessary for Fusion to work, so we have to drag that in. Uh, again, this is just like kind of um, behind the scenes stuff. This is like nuts and bolts uh, how Mesh Fusion works. Uh, so now we'll need an actual mesh to start the Fusion. If I simply drag the sphere into the schematic, we only get the sphere node. And if I look in the channels, there's no Fusion channels for us to um, to drag into the schematic. So what we have to do is we have to use the schematic Fusion Pi menu. So if I hold Control F and choose Prep and Add Selected Meshes, that will actually give us two channels, uh, the Fusion Feed channel and the Fusion Feed Negated channel. Uh, and it also turns our wireframe uh, this kind of purple color, which we'll just ignore for now. Uh, because we'll get a Fusion, like a procedural surface once we pipe this into the, the Fusion item. 
Now we need a Fusion Intersect node and we need a Fusion Union node to complete the setup. Uh, so we can do that one of two ways. We can click on Add and then type in Fusion in the text input field. And here at the bottom we have Fusion Intersection and Fusion Subtract and Fusion Union. Um, we can also get that from the Fusion Pi menu in the schematic viewport. So if I hold Control F and bring up that Pi menu, uh, we can choose Add Fusion Intersect node and Control F again and add Fusion Union node. So now I can take this uh, sphere and I can take the Fusion Feed output and I can plug that into the primary input of the Fusion Intersect and then I can take the output of that Fusion Intersect, not the output negated but just the regular output um, not here and drag that into the input of the Fusion Union and then the output of that fusion union into the fusion tree in of the uh, fusion item node. So now we have that procedural surface. So that's kind of uh, giving us the same thing that we would normally get if we were just to click the sphere item in the viewport and then click new fusion. But that's kind of a, a way to manually set this up. So now let's add some other uh, mesh items. First we'll add the uh, egg small, so I'll just drag that in, and we'll also add the egg. So let's see, these both need to be prepped because they don't have the fusion feed and fusion feed negated uh, channels, so I'll just drag here to select both of them, control F to bring up the fusion Pi menu in schematic, and I'll just prep and add selected meshes, and there we go. So let's make these visible. And you can see they, they both have this purple wireframe as well. So the egg small, the inner egg, let's use the fusion feed negated, which will give us a trim uh, effect, a trim subtractive effect. And we'll just pipe that into the input node of the fusion intersect. So now it's subtracting. That's the equivalent of selecting this mesh item and choosing this icon here in the set mesh role and apply uh, fusion side tab. It just subtracts. Now we want this outer egg, the larger one, to be an, uh, a trim intersect so that only what's between the sphere and the boundary of the outer egg surface will remain. So to do that, we'll take the fusion feed and we'll pipe that into the input of the fusion intersect. So now we're getting that sort of effect. And that's the equivalent of taking this larger egg and clicking on this icon in the set mesh roll and apply fusion side tab. So now we can manually uh, create a uh, compound trim. So I'll show you how that works. We'll take this disk and I'll drag this into the schematic. And again, I'll hold control F to bring up the fusion pie menu and I'll choose prep and add selected meshes. And then we're going to create uh, two new fusion nodes, a fusion intersect and a fusion union. Again, I could click on Add, or I can hold Control F and choose Add Intersect Node, and Control F again and add Union Node. There we go. So I'll drag that up here. And this is going to be piped in to uh, the Fusion Node, along with this Fusion Union Node, which will be piped into this new Fusion Union Node. So you can think of this as like a second branch of the tree and they're all being fed into the trunk, which goes into the root fusion uh, item. So I'll take this disk, and I'll take the fusion feed, and I'll pipe that into the input, like so. And then the output of that fusion intersect will go into the input of the fusion union. And then I'll take this output of the original fusion union, and that'll go into the input of this fusion union and the output will go into the fusion item. So that's the sort of effect we're getting now. And you can see our edge weighting on the disk is being lost. So we have to go into the fusion item and in the properties uh, we can scroll down and we can turn on edge weighting. But first let's change the mesh mode to airtight final item part. And then we'll come over to edge weights, turn that on. And I like to work with the single loop type. It just makes our procedural mesh a little bit less uh, dense. So that's what we're getting now. So the disk is being unioned or added to the original fusion setup. 
Now what's nice is because we have these fusion feed negated uh, channels available in our original meshes, we can have this interact with our uh, other branch. So we can get the branches to sort of uh, cross. So if I take the inner egg, this is the smaller egg here, and I take the fusion feed negated and I pipe that into the uh, input of our second um, fusion branch, you can see we get this sort of effect. So now the, the egg is actually cutting a hole through the, uh, through the actual disk. And similarly, we can take the uh, fusion feed, not the negated, but the regular fusion feed of the outer egg, the larger egg, and we can uh, pipe that into the input as well. And what that'll do is that'll trim the outer uh, part of the disk. So now if I hold Control F and I uh, toggle the source visibility, uh, we can see we have this sort of basket effect, which is pretty cool. And if I take the uh, inner egg, and in polygons mode, just press R to scale it, uh, we can scale inward a little bit, and you can make that kind of, uh, uh, you can change that thickness. So that was just a quick demonstration of the uh, Fusion Pi menu and how it's different uh, depending on where you hold Control F. Uh, you get different uh, Pi menu options if you hold Control F in the 3D viewport uh, as you would if you hold Control F in the schematic viewport. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, I hope more people dive into uh, the schematic fusion. I think it's really powerful. Okay, thanks for watching. Yum, yum!